Good morning kids, and today we're checking out a bit of an old video from Wow Suds Gaming about Dead Space. The Necromorphs, are they zombie or not? Featuring Rono Gaming. Not for me, but for him. So let's hop in and just see how these zombie-like creatures may not actually be even zombies. Which makes sense, they don't eat human flesh, they just kill and spread. So it's been a hot minute since I covered anything directly Dead Space related. Nearly half a decade, in fact, with my third ever Why You Wouldn't Survive video. After beating the remake twice and overhearing some online discussion, a question came to mind. Do the necromorphs of the Dead Space franchise count as zombies? It's in a very gray area, more so than the typical zombie v infected. But can we rope <laughs> the spacefaring biomaster of a necromorphs into the same section as a zombie? I put up a poll on the I YouTube would. community page and my Twitter, and the results were either kind of close or extremely tight. People love to classify creatures and monsters within certain groups for ease of discussion and or scientific research. And who doesn't love overly explaining fictitious media in a biological and or survival-like fashion than I and my brother in swole arms, Roanoke Gaming. Today, we are discussing oh, we are Dead Space's Necromorphs zombies or not? Hold on, we'll be right back, and we're back. Let's go. Today's video will be a bit of a short form two sides argue in their case. With I, Zach S, aka Wild Gaming, proficient in zombie history, lore, and studies into game development, mm -hmm. on the side of the necromorphs not considered zombies. While Roanoke Gaming, more proficient in both microbiology and overall science stuff, as well as the lore and anatomy of Dead Space, should be True. considered zombies. So, get your markers out, and let's <laughs> get reanimating, Funny. shall we? So to start things off, I'll go ahead and state why the Necromorphs shouldn't be labeled as zombies. When you think of what constitutes a zombie, what do you think of? The usual and answer is body. the reanimated dead or corpses brought back to life with the addendum of eating the flesh and or brains of the living, but most importantly is their similarity to the people they were before. The purpose and physiology of a Necromorph is a bit more complicated than that of a zombie though. The Necromorphs are post-human abominations whose anatomy mm. has been been rearranged in a highly efficient manner, but aren't directly just yeah, a dead body coming back mutated. to life. Rather, a threat stemming from an amalgamation of more and more biomass creating a hive mind network thanks to a telepathic entity. Technically speaking, in terms of their conceptual creation, things can also be construed in a literal sense. Former visceral designer Ben Wannett said the term necromorph coined by his wife randomly one night is just simply oh. put as dead and change. It accentuates the critical mm. point of the necromorphs. They are the dead, but changed beyond just coming back to life, as well as to serve a greater purpose. Mm. Yes, they do look I always took it as dead form, but I guess that was just me. ...to infect people and force them to join their ranks. But that is where the similarities with the typical zombie stops. When I think of a zombie, I think of a literal mindless drone set with one task in mind, and that is to spread the infection. And hell, the original definition of zombie before the horror genre got hold of it was just that. A subservient, speechless, willless puppet mindlessly going on with its existence basically in autopilot. When you ah, think of a zombie, yeah, you okay. think of the droning hordes ravenously walking or running towards the nearest jingling meat keys together to consume and infect. Oh, God, there the isn't a grander design or precursor to these efforts. There is nothing driving them besides just the one goal. They are just a machine with no give until they are ultimately put down by destroying destroying the brain or removing the head. I would like to say how the Necromorphs deviate from these key factors. They are a result of the indoctrinating efforts of the ancient markers emitting mm -hmm. wavelengths to control the masses, to bend normal yeah. people's will through any means necessary, using images of loved ones, voices in their heads. You really can't remove the head because it's not going to do anything to crack their mental faculties, and oh so much more to bring tons of people to a cult-like level to usurp important civilized organizations and hierarchies to spread its influence until eventually they either kill in the marker's name or are killed. Once dead bodies have been accumulated, the signals oh, emitted damn. by the markers will mutate the flesh of the dead into many different forms of the necromorphs using their biomass. It's Seemingly not really an infection it. that invades the brain, mind you, but rather a virus that hijacks every single 
single organic cell into overtime to cause the connected biomass to become a violent vessel to outright kill organisms to harvest their flesh. The marker haphazardly converts bodies into the most improvised but violent forms their frames could possibly allow, hence why the most basic form, the slasher, are what people would say are zombies with broken and twisted arms, torso, and legs to make their every motion fatal. But yeah, unlike zombies, removing the head does not necessarily stop their onslaught, as systemically removing each appendage and limb is the only legitimate method of stopping singular forms. The creature doesn't necessarily die like a zombie would, the brain has been shut off so the body stops moving. No, the marker decides to cut functions to that entity since most of its lethality has been neutralized. Once brain, you have destroyed many needed. of the limbs, well, the marker doesn't see any worth in it, and the marker will basically flip the internal kill switch. So the marker sees it as better to shut it off for now and continue to gather resources and information. The biomass from these dead units, though, is also still available for the necromorphs to come back to later to use in this Ooh. amalgamation, instead of just okay. rotting in a corner like any other zombie. Now, the biomass from all types of life forms being potential for making all sorts of different variations of different necromorphs, rather than a virus relying on pre-existing or environmental Ooh. conditions Ow. to create special variants. The marker consistently works with the biomass readily available in every location to more effectively attack survivors swiftly and defiantly. Using infectors to infect dead bodies, they find and eventually drag the biomass of the dead into piles to create stronger variants, a beefier mental network to command the necromorphs for more coordination, yep. and eventually the serve the greater purpose of the marker. Using as much life as possible to fuse it all together in order to create the godlike asteroid-sized yep. brethren moons with the intent of consuming all organic matter in the galaxy. You can make oh, the argument yeah. that the mental faculty hijacking of the marker is the infection at first, the precursor before the space zombies come into the picture. Once these undead are cropping up though, do these reanimated corpses start walking and start infecting, making zombies akin to what we are familiar with? Considering the marker's capabilities at understanding us, it's basically the marker serving two purposes to whittle us down. To wear us down physically with nightmarish slaughter, but also to provide imagery within our heads that tricks us into wanting to join the marker's influence and that of the thing is though is that the marker will only take those that are intelligent enough to actually understand it if you are intelligent it's want to it will want to have you fuse with it if you're barely intelligent enough it will want you to spread the message if you're a complete idiot you're, uh, you're just gonna go mad right then and there creating genetic abominations Ooh, yeah. that fall in line with our preconceived notions of an undead person. Basically, it's using the most horrific element of the zombie narrative, seeing former friends, family, and loved ones as these ravenous undead, using that aspect, but in its own unique way, by exploiting the human subconscious. Using the mental imagery and physical imagery to wear you down to make you snap so you can be a living and doctor indoctrinated foot soldier for the marker either as a living person or as an abomination, but the marker yeah. and its ultimate goal only has these slashers and infectors as temporary foot soldiers along the way as it dredges towards its ultimate goal. And those most it's, basic yeah, form of the basic foot soldiers install. like the slasher are just fragmented forms of what you would label a zombie, but ultimately the necromorphs are way more than what their few basic forms are. On the surface, yeah, I could easily see how you could view a necromorph as just simply zombies. Exactly. But hell, even looking at what media and games inspired their design philosophy, like John Carpenter's The Thing, System Shock, and Resident Evil 4, most oh, of which cool. refrain from zombie archetypes in favor of biomass infections melting people to bend their shape and form into monstrous beasts, or infections that bend the will of people oh, but God. retain some of their humanity. I mean, look at the thing. You don't look at one of John Carpenter's creatures and say, Oh, that thing? Yeah, that's a zombie. No, no that's no, a that's thing. Hell, the necromorphs in their transformative capabilities over the course of three games are more in line with the thing. The necromorphs go off yeah. the signals relayed He's by their developing hive mind network that only grows in strength with the more biomass it accumulates in order to improvise a horrific aesthetic to optimize both a terrifying 
appearance and a lethal attack pattern or strategy. Yes, the idea of the zombie is there, but that is just the basics of it. Bottom line, the necromorphs aren't zombies, and if my ramblings through everything I just stated about how they deviate so heavily from the one note all we want to do is eat your brain's corpse aesthetic the necromorphs are not easily wiped out by head injuries but rather tedious dismemberment they don't uniformly go after prey if the marker doesn't command it they are a beehive of organic cell orgies wrapped up in a cesspool of cannibalization and mutilation so that each piece of meat does not go unused for the marker's right. rising brethren zombies just want to eat or spread the infection. There is a greater goal. The Marker wants to make these Brethren Moons to wipe out all organic life in the galaxy, much like Helos Flood. And for humans to even try and okay. fight back, their mental faculties will be shattered time and time again along the way via indoctrinating sonar waves that won't stop until organic life is all but consumed. The art director for Dead Space puts it pretty eloquently enough when it comes to their threat and summarizes what I'm saying while keeping the mystery of their intents encapsulated. They want to use you in a way that's not right, uh, that adds another layer of, of like intimacy and, and wrongness and relationship uh, to the whole thing that makes it so much more scarier than mindless killers. And that ain't no zombie I ever heard of. What? Do zombies come back from the dead and eat flesh? Yes. But do zombies have a hot mind network they use to slap that flesh together to haphazardly make abominations of nature and a flash to make you go insane telepathically all while a big ass moon constructs above your head to eat all organic life? What? That would actually depend on like the type of zombie. Like if it's a parasitic zombie, yes, but if it's a regular viral infection, not completely. Like if it's a viral, that's a lot more real. Zombies, motherfucker! Does that sound like some kind of zombie thing to you? <laughs> no, 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 it sounds more like the, the thing to me, or, or Halo's Flood, or maybe even a bit of Mass Effect's Reapers. Now we're getting somewhere. What do some of the devs have to think? There's two explanations for Necromorph. Long version is it's part of this alien virus that kind of comes out of the planet when people start cracking it open. Short version, it's space zombie. Now don't go yeah, simplifying it after all that over explanation I just did. Quit it. And basically Dead Space is, uh, is using sort of zombie lore and zombie canon in our own way. Um, we, uh, with the reanimated flesh of the dead crew, uh, we're sort of invoking very traditional zombie ideas. A zombie is a machine. It's a biological guided weapon. That is what's so terrifying. Okay, this is starting to feel like we're getting to the part of the video where it says the necromorphs being zombies. I'm out. The coolest thing about the necromorphs is that they're not traditional zombies. You have to learn about them. You have to figure out what they are and how to kill them. Well, with that being said, not I think wrong. we have our bridge into the thoughts of Roanoke, so take it away, brother. Shut up. <laughs> What are zombies? If we look towards the definition ah, of these go. creatures, we will find that in voodoo itself, they are a mute and willless body robbed of its soul and given a semblance of life by supernatural forces, usually used for manual labor or some evil purpose. This would be the original terminology until movies, games, and TV shows came in and began mm -hmm. to screw with the understanding. As we all know, typically what we see in today's day and age are infected people. These people's purpose is to eat others of the same species and further the infection by secondary consequences. Those being someone bitten and then escaping only to succumb, to the infection itself. As time has passed, the idea of the zombie itself has been inadvertently combined with the term infected, calling into question if we could really call the necromorphs that we see in Dead Space legitimate zombies or something else. I'm here to argue that they could and should be considered zombies for several reasons, relating to how their initial infection begins, which involved in a takeover of a person, all the way oh, to yeah, the Brotherhood the Moons. And to understand this, we need to know how everything begins. The first piece of the puzzle that, to a human species, would appear to be pure evil is going to be the marker touching down on Earth. This relic with genetic coding instructions carved into its surface of the marker itself would touch down and immediately begin influencing species all around it, guiding and shaping, at least on our planet, the mammalian branch of life that would give rise to humanity. The area of effect of the marker has also robbed anything of its sanity and their own will by an unknown force 
that our species has yet to fully understand. The marker actually works a lot- And yet people are assuming it's some kind of unlimited power source. Like the light lures on deep sea fish, drawing animals in to investigate what this is before jaws of some larger creature snap shut on them. While that is the nature of an animal, the nature of what created the marker appears to be to grow a sapient race only to destroy them at their height and assimilate them. In doing so, the yeah. person will be changed as they spend more and more time near the marker, which has a profound effect on their bodies, including their immune systems. It is well known in Dead Space lore that it's not just the marker that is imposing on the lifespan of humans, but a tangible and infectious form of life simply known as a type of viral bacteria. The reasoning behind it being called a viral bacteria is that it is most definitely an altered form of prokaryote. Whether it originated from Earth or not is unknown, but I would suggest that it probably has. Much like how humans can be altered genetically okay. by the marker, so too can the bacteria within our guts. Oh. This initial infection, which is able to run rampant, will yeah. begin overwhelming the they body can. of the original person exposed to the marker signal. It's known as a briny, yellowish liquid that's highly infectious. As their immune responses are disrupted by the signal assaulting their bodies, increasing cortisol levels, disrupting sleep to dangerous levels, and pretty much inhibiting their ability to eat, their bodies would begin to break down, allowing this viral bacteria to invade the rest of their cells. From here, <laughs> this is where they change. So it should be noted that not unlike, say, the T-virus, for instance, it will change their actual cellular DNA. Mm. This genetic coding within their bodies is the main component altered by this infection. As it is, their tissue is reorganized, making them more effective at infecting others with the same disease. Right. The infector will go out and begin cracking through skulls of humans to create the slashers. In other ways, which are not seen in game, leapers can also be created, but I think where the argument that they are not zombies comes up is that they can form larger creatures, such as the brute, the tripod in Dead Space 2, and even larger creatures past that, such as the hive mind, and eventually the Brother of Moon. And because of and this, the they are precluded the from Leviathan. receiving the moniker Zombie. But therein lies the issue. All the hierarchical structures are in place to give these creatures a textbook definition of Zombie. The argument being made to the counter is that they are in fact not zombies because they are controlled by something humans do not understand. They are willless bodies, controlled by something else. But again, that is the exact definition is, of a zombie, yeah. according to That's Voodoo. A there is a supernatural force reanimating